we're talking polar bears. Polar bears. Polar bears. Science of polar bears. Now let's take the political propaganda, let's put it aside in this whole global warming debate. Are we really going to lose the polar bears? In the last video that we did, Jonas explored the giant panda, an icon of conservation. Preserving them in China preserves large patches of bamboo forests. They're symbols, and by protecting them, it saves habitat that otherwise would have been cut down. At the end, Jonas asked this. I want you to find out whether the polar bear really will be able to survive if things continue the way they are right now and the Arctic keeps melting. Well, if you listen to environmental activists, they'll say this. We're losing ice. Polar bears need ice. And without the ice, they won't survive, so they're going extinct soon. And this all comes down to a few basic assumptions that we need to address. First, without ice, polar bears cannot survive. Second, the ice won't be around, and hence, polar bears won't either. Third, polar bears won't be able to adapt to the change. And this is really a tricky question. Nothing in conservation is all that cut and dry. So we first need to start by looking at the science of the polar bear. And I'm gonna try to explain this as simply as I can. The bear and ice. Now you may have heard that polar bears are restricted to ice. And the reason for that is because of the way they hunt. One way is to sit and wait at a breathing hole. All the marine mammals they eat need air, so you wait at a few holes in the ice and when they pop up, you pounce on them. And if the ice cover wasn't high, then the prey would just pop up in the middle of a body of water and it'd be pretty hard for the polar bear to get food like this. You can dig into a sealed den. Of course, you need the ice for that too. They can also stalk their prey, kind of like a lion might, slowly sneaking up on them, using the big cracks in the ice to get close. Definitely difficult, but it is an option, especially if the reward is a giant fat seal. They can also use various methods of jumping into the water and sneaking up on their prey. Also very difficult. Either way, with the exception of some scavenging of whales and the odd random morsel, polar bears use the ice as their way to get food. But if the ice leaves, could polar bears just switch diets? Say, like grizzlies do? Well, almost definitely not. And here's what we know. The polar bear is an apex predator and almost entirely a carnivore, an opportunistic carnivore to be more exact. It eats mainly ringed seals, bearded seals, harp seals, hooded seals, narwhals, walruses, belugas, but understand that they will eat just about anything they find. That doesn't mean though that they can just survive on random things. They need to eat food that provides positive energy for their time. To get anything from eating, say, a goose, scientists have calculated that a polar bear could only chase that goose for about 12 seconds. Any more than that is kind of like the equivalent of us having to climb up a cliff to eat a few pistachios. It would hardly be worth it. And get this, if a polar bear had to survive for an extra month without hunting seals on the ice, like if the ice left a month earlier, scientists have calculated that an adult polar bear would need 2,350 pounds of alpine blueberries or 1,670 snow goose eggs. And to put it in perspective, there's 900 or so polar bears in the western Hudson Bay. Those bears would need about 1.5 million eggs a month to compensate for a month loss of ice hunting. But given that there's only 200,000 eggs in the snow goose colonies there, that's not a great option for the bears. But the basic food requirements aside, which is a big, big thing, what are the threats that face these 20,000 polar bears that exist in the world today? The human hunters, land being cleared for human development, pollution of the Arctic, of course, all those could be threats, but only to certain local bears. Humans aren't much of a threat anymore, it used to be. We put an end to unregulated sport hunting in 1973 when these countries signed the agreement on the conservation of polar bears. And given that polar bears live where there are few humans and generally few human pollutants, they're not really dealing with the problems that most at-risk animals are facing. In the big scheme, we're not encroaching much into their habitat, aside from the odd oil rig or two. They're more or less left to their own in the frozen north. But they are, to some degree, facing a habitat destruction problem, like the other endangered animals are facing. And this habitat problem is kind of a very indirect one. Yes, I'm talking about climate change here. Now, I hate talking about global warming, climate change, whatever you want to call it. Jonas knows this. Thing is, it's boring. We know that global temperatures are increasing. The most interesting part, though, is trying to predict and deal with the changes. Here is a NASA visualization of the sea ice lost since 1979. You can see in this graphic that summer ice cover is decreasing. And based on what we know about polar bear diets, we know they don't exist in areas where there's no ice or very little extended ice cover. In fact, they can only handle a little bit of time without it, as it's difficult for them to find enough food. Now, before we go any further, I know what some of you might be thinking. Why can't they just adapt? Animals do that, right? Back up. Problems with that rationale. In the far north, there are other bears around. 
Grizzlies live here, black bears live here, and polar bears basically live here. Even though there does look like there's some overlap, generally they're exploiting different habitats. They try to avoid each other, they're not all that cozy with each other. They fill different ecological niches, so to speak. A grizzly bear, which is mostly a vegetarian that eats meat, doesn't do all that well hunting seals. And a polar bear doesn't do that well fishing for salmon or eating berries. They're well adapted to their specific habitat. So if we lose ice in certain areas, if we lose polar bear habitat, then yes, we would expect to lose the polar bears there. Now I've heard other arguments go like this. I've heard polar bears can mate with grizzlies. Couldn't they just start mating with them and create a new super hybrid? Well, it is true that a hybrid is called a pizzly bear or a growler bear, and there's been two officially documented wild cases here and here. But for the most part, no. Brown bears and polar bears don't get along all that well. And what it appears is that instead of polar bears invading grizzly territory to get those hybrids, they seem to be male grizzlies invading polar bear territory. The idea that they'd just interbreed their way to a new species to survive climate change is a big stretch. And that would probably fall into the zone of trying to predict evolution. However, we do know that polar bears evolved from grizzly bears. And just like wolves and coyotes, there's some gene flow between the species. Grizzlies and polar bears are similar species and they already share some DNA, and their evolutionary path will probably always have some movement of genes. How much? We're not sure. So to wrap things up, we know that polar bears are restricted to the icy seal-filled habitats. We can even postulate that losing the type of ice that polar bears need to hunt in would mean an end to the polar bears. Now, if you're a conservation organization, you've probably already told everybody that. The population is in jeopardy, and we need to look very carefully at what we can do to help keep those bears around. Is that an end to all polar bears, though? Polar bears are likely to be around in 50 years, even if we don't do anything, but at very reduced numbers and very reduced distribution. By the end of the century, the prognosis for uh, extinction worldwide was much, much uh, more likely. If, on the other hand, we get our act together and mitigate greenhouse gases, the likelihood is that we would have a lot more polar bears in a lot more areas. It's a really simple question in some ways. We're gonna have fewer polar bears. Do we want fewer polar bears? No. Of course not, nobody wants that. We want to know they're up there in the frozen north roaming wild, and that's why everyone is using the polar bear as an icon for climate change. Dwell on these amazing animals living in the frozen north, and use those good thoughts to try to encourage politicians to help ease the human impacts of climate change. The United States will double the pace at which we cut carbon pollution, and China committed for the first time. Yeah, I'm for that, who wouldn't be? Jonas, I hope that answered your question. I know that sometimes when we talk about these things in person, I like to play devil's advocate and I don't necessarily always say what I believe. What I'd like you to do though is continue the conversation and maybe do a video on how animals are able to adapt to change and not just what we tell everybody. What do scientists actually know about animals adapting to change? How quickly can they do it? All that stuff's super interesting and I'd enjoy watching a video on it.